Yay, how's it going? It's uh, mid-September right now. Almost fall, but not quite fall yet. Got down like 4 degrees at night a few nights ago. But then today, right back up in the 80s. And I mean, there's stuff still going off. There's stuff just coming out now. You know, you get your golden rods. You saw a dog going off. Seen a couple of euthamia. Got some onothera. Got the... Uh, Milkweeds get all their little follicles out, and uh, we finally got some rain. The last couple weeks actually been raining quite a bit. The last few days, and uh, I've been here before, you know. So I'm gonna take a look around, see what I can see that I know is supposed to be. Or I actually already found the uh, orchid I was looking for. It's a species of Spiranthes. We might get into it with that because that's a whole. It's a whole topic I wanted to discuss about, uh, you know, in regard to spiranthes and that whole thing going on, going on with them. You know, something called the simplex. So there's uh, essentially, you know, a cluster of um, cluster of species that are all closely aligned. Usually, you know, pretty goddamn difficult to tell apart. So it's the uh, spiranthes cernua simplex, the uh, nodding ladies tresses and i guess they've been broken out into species but we'll go we'll, we'll take a look at those well uh there might be some polygalaceae around here and uh we'll see what else is going on i'm just going to kind of do a walk around and uh you get your ambrosia I, I believe that's ambrosia i'll come back to that in a minute you know just lots of stuff wrapping up some stuff just opening up shop too um but we'll take a, like I just said, we'll take a walk around. We'll see what's going on. And we'll, uh, you know, break out our, our botanizing helmets and we'll get into it. So stay tuned. I'll check in with you in one second. Man, milkweed, milkweed, uh, milkweed pods everywhere, huh? But, uh, yeah, let me, let me check back in with you. Let me see what's going on. And I'll, uh, check in with you when we get something to talk about. The milkweeds, the milkweeds got the fuzz, just like uh, just like the asters do. Here was the pod, blew up. Here's the seed right here. Good seed too, you know. Could plant uh, plant some milkweed out. There was a milkweed bug hanging out here a second ago. There he goes right there. He's going. Shit. There's the milkweed beetle. Or I think that's the false. Um, this is a false milkweed bug. But anyway. You see guys that look like that hanging out on milkweed a lot. So here's the pappus, which is just a fancy botanical term for the fuzz that comes off those seeds that get crammed into the pods like you see them there. And then when they're ready to go, the whole thing just poof, explodes. Not explodes, I don't think they explosively dehiss, but they definitely, you know, push that seed up and out, or just out, I guess. But, uh, you know, that's how they are able to, you know, dehiss their seeds pretty far and wide and I'm gonna go ahead and guess that these will these are good maybe these will grow into us uh, the next year maybe a little bit too high up here but kick them a couple feet over they should germinate right along this line here I mean, there's plenty of them growing right now so uh, who knows so there you go there's another plant doing the same thing that that milkweed is doing doing the same thing you see a lot of sunflowers including a uh, well, most notably dandelions of course the cattails uh, Asters and milkweeds are all completely unrelated in three completely different families and in fact, I believe in three completely different orders You have uh, obviously, you know, sunflowers and aster alleys, asteraceae uh, 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 Cattails over here and typhaceae, I believe in po alleys, I believe they're actually in the order of grasses and then of course uh, milkweeds and uh, I'm gonna forget the order, but the family is of course uh Oh, jeez, am I standing in poison ivy? Uh, Apostanaceae. And I just always, I forget the, I forget the order. Definitely, I mean, it's not Astralis, and it's not, definitely not Poalis. So, three different orders. Three completely unrelated plants, all doing the same thing to get their seeds around. You know, just a good indication that uh, having fuzzy pappus is a good way to, um, you know, get your seeds around. You got a real nice Simpio trick in here. The American asters, as they call them, and I mean, just like Saldago, they're all pretty great. I believe if it's in the genus Symphiotrichum, 
It's native. A lot of these used to be in the genus Aster, but then I think they made the genus Symphiotrichum. American Asters. Look how nice those phyleries are. Get up in there. See the individual florets. Real pretty plant. I mean, you could go down a rabbit hole with these just like you can go down with Solid Doggo. I don't know which has more species. Both have over 30. I mean, probably just in probably just in the state alone. Probably get 60 species between, between Symphio Trichum and Solid Doggo. I think the, uh, you know, some really famous ones. These these fortunately do a lot of these species of Symphio Trichum. And even, even the Solid Doggos get planted out plenty. I mean, I just, <laughs> I can't really tell you much about them other than the fact that uh, definitely a Symphio Trichum. I'll take some pictures. The uh, little book I got with me is not very helpful. I mean, uh, if you get, the, you know, you, you always got to get the phyleries. Just remember, always got to get the phyleries uh, when you're dealing with the sunflower family. Yeah, that's a nice one. Coming up uh, in the gravelly little, uh, gravelly little swampy area. I'll take some pictures of this. Maybe I can get a good ID. I'll get another sunflower growing down there, but I'm not going to. It's all wet and I mean, I can see it. Looks like I could just step down and get right into it, but I see right there. That's all water right here. This guy's growing right in the muck, so I'm not going to risk it. Maybe I'll see it again. Who knows? You also had some, uh, some. Uh, I don't know if it was anaphylis or if it was just more of that pseudonephalium. You get, you get the uh, the nephali tribe coming up in some of the sand around here too. So maybe we'll go take a look at that. I'm just, I'm building you up for the spiranthes orchid, mostly because, uh, uh going to look nice i'll be able to find it and it's getting dark it's a white flowers i'll be able to find it pretty easily but uh that's enough of this we'll take one more lap around here see if there's anything else good and then i probably got to wrap it up but uh i don't really know what my point was i kind of just want i knew that i knew that that orchid was out so many of them seem to bloom early in the year and you get this one which doesn't even go off until september into october that's pretty nice in my book it's pretty interesting so we'll go take a look at that take a look at one or two other things here if i can find them and we'll get out of here. So I think this is just another Symphiotrichum I pulled up on. If I'm not mistaken, this might be Symphiotrichum racemosum. Look at the raceme, you know. Just a, the whole thing is just a, just a spike that sticks out of the ground with the flowers on it, you know. Still got the, obviously the traditional aster morphology there. What are the bracts doing? Oh, those are nice. Different than what we just saw. Same, you know different than what we just saw you know leaves you get a handful of leaves and what they said was diagnostic it's a simple little lanceolate leaf so you get these little bracts that whirl up around the uh, flower heads there kind of subtend not to be confused with phyleries but uh doing something almost almost kind of like what biden's does i guess interesting so this is a, a plant that kind of looks like a goldenrod, and I believe this specific one was actually at one point considered to be in the genus Saldago. We've got a Euthamia here. We've got a couple species in that genus. I'll put that. Uh, ooh, my nose is itching. I'll put the actual number there for you if you're curious. Euthamia. I think they call these gold tops. What you got going on there? Gotta look at the phyleries. Gotta look at the phyleries. Yeah. Actually, not really that much, but, uh, you know, I like them just because they kind of dupe you into thinking they're a solid doggo, but they got a whole, not a whole different thing going on, but different enough to be interesting. Gramnifolia, because it's got the grass-like leaves. I think we saw this the same day that we was looking at, uh, we were out looking down in the Cape for that endemic yupe in that, um, that gentian, that, uh, Sabatia, Kennedy, I don't know they get down there, um, I believe this is Euthamia gramnifolia. I could be completely botching that, but uh, whatever. It's a, it's a, I, think, I think you only get two species in this genus. Um, Euthamia gramnifolia. And then, oh, I'm thinking of Pityopsis. There's another little yellow bastard that looks kind of like, well, not kind of like this. doesn't look much like this. The leaves kind of look like it when you pull up on it, but the flower head's doing something different. This has like solidago like uh, flowers, but it, again, the morphology is just ever so slightly different. And I guess the genetics back that up, but a Pityopsis, um, oh, I can't remember the, 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 put the species name down there too. The Pityopsis is the genus, might be Gramnifolia, it might have the same epithet. Turns out, I, I just stumbled across that one of the Cape, I just picked it up and talked about it for a minute, I identified it. Turns out that bastard's 
an endemic uh, in of himself. I didn't even realize it was endemic when I was looking at it. So uh, yeah, go back and watch uh, my video on Cape Cod, um, specifically the one, I don't even know what I'm going to title it yet, but I'll punch Shimafusa. But yeah, I've come to like these guys. They're, they're nice little plants. They come up in a, I like the habitats they come up in. The plant itself is, eh, meh. I could see you kind of throwing this one off, but a roundabout way of saying it just reminded me of Pityopsis. I ended up looking into that plant after the fact. It turns out it's endemic and that it's pretty rare and that it just happens to do really well on Cape Cod. So uh, yeah, go check out Cape Cod. You should botanize out there. It's pretty much as interesting as the uh, White Mountains to me anyway. So we'll, uh, we'll leave this guy alone. I think, you know, it's getting dark. I think I should go just look at that orchid real quick and get out of here. Sorry, still here with Euphemia. Yeah, Euphemia is the genus, um, but this is Caroliniana, I think, actually, not Gramnifolia. You would think that Gramnifolia would have the smaller leaves, but apparently Gramnifolia's leaves are just ever so slightly wider. Uh, oh, and the other plant I was talking about was Pityopsis falcata. I like Euphamia. You probably will find this to be kind of a boring a boring plant or a boring genus. Go look up Pityopsis falcata. Um, probably a more interesting plant for your money. But uh, yeah, it's one of the two or three species of Euphamia we get up here. There's really not that many of them. Caroliniana would be flowering now. Gramnifolia, again, slightly wider leaves, would have been flowering a couple months ago. Uh, you know, not that that really is a, is the give or break, because of course, you know, your phenology could be off, but there's so many of them in full bloom right now. I think we're going to go with uh, Euphemia Caroliniana instead. And of course, that uh, Symphiotrichum racemosum, just from a distance, just looks looks really striking. That's that's fascinating. Symphiotrichums, man, you know, worth it to know, worth it to know a couple of the species, but just like, uh, you know, these Saldagos here, it's just so, there's just so many of them. You can walk out and you could see, you know, five or six of them growing in one area and uh, basically just be guessing at the species. Well, I shouldn't say that you wouldn't be guessing at the species. There are people who I'm sure are very, very good at um, knowing and understanding what it is they're looking at uh, more so than me, which is fine. But, uh, you know, I, I appreciate them. I, like, I actually really do appreciate a solid doggo. It's just, you know, I, I have the energy um, to, to key out maybe one or two a day. You know, assuming it's not one that I recognize instantly, like solid doggo by color, which uh, go back a couple episodes and I, I was taking, I guess I called it con color. But I, you know, I knew that one off the top, you know, solid Dago canadensis is one that you should just know. But I mean, I don't even bother really going after that one just because, I mean, it's, it's just, uh, it's kind of everywhere. And, uh, you know, same deal with some field trichums. I like them. I appreciate them. But after, you know, keying out three or four of them, you know. And if you're doing both, just forget about it. I mean, you walk and then there's just a new species, subtle differences. It's good practice. You should do it. You absolutely should take some time to learn the uh, species and key them out. But I think that we, you know, deserve grace when we get a little bit burnt out. I'm, I'm doing this for fun. If I haven't already said that a million times. Now we're going by some of the button bush seeds. Do that from, tried to grow that from seed. I'm a little bit traumatized. I kind of want to try and grow it again. I'm just afraid I'm going to kill the thing again, though. All right. I'm rambling. I'm showing you nothing but just, you know, st stuff that I'm not really going to talk about. So I'll put this down. Let's go look at our orchid. Let's uh, wrap this up. Jeez, I don't even know how many more videos I'm going to be able to do. Those frosts will start rolling in pretty soon. But we can always talk about the, uh, you know, the changing leaves, stuff like that. All right, um, yeah, a couple more things. Sorry if this is kind of a low-key episode, but I mean, I, I, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, what do you, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Just point, to, point out to you, you know, all the different species of common weedy aster. I mean, native common weedy aster. There's nothing wrong with it being common or weedy. It just doesn't sound like a very interesting video. I'd rather either talk to you about an interesting. A plant that's either interesting ecologically, you know, rather than generalist plants like asters, or talk to you about um, a plant that's rare, you know. 
Um, but I suppose it's important to reference the good stuff. The, I'm sorry, not the good, you know, you know what I mean, the common stuff. Or, you know, point at the stuff that's rather common. You get some Onothra down there. Onothra bianus. Evening, uh, evening primrose. No relation to the uh, family Primulaceae. That's in the family Onagraceae. Actually, let me see if I can find one of those. We'll put one of those down. We'll take a look. I've been seeing that plant all, um, well, not all month, but, you know, the last few weeks I've been seeing that plant popping up. And uh, it's an interesting one because actually the flowers will be opening right about now. So that does that whole interesting thing where it get, opens up its flowers at night. The flowers um, close up or die in the morning. I'll put whatever is correct there in the uh, subtitles. But, all right, that's enough yapping. And coming up here was what I was talking about a second ago. Here's one of those evening primroses. I believe this is Onothra bianus. This is the common one. I mean, it grows everywhere here. You get some, uh, I mean, it can get quite large, quite tall. Uh, a lot of these flowers will probably be opening up a little later. This is what the capsules look like. And it's a flower that blooms at night. Actually, you can see the floral tube. These are the sepals. I don't know. What would you call that? Is that the you know, is that, not not silver form, I don't think. The little anthers in there. Little four-parted uh, stigma at the top. And uh, take a whiff of it. They smell delightful. It kind of it kind of smells like sugary cereal to me. But uh, a lot of people really love these. I guess it's been a bad year for them. You know, this time of year, normally you'd see expect to see them doing a lot better. A lot of them are kind of looking like hell. They bloomed late and they're already wrapping up. Because we've been in a pretty pretty bad drought with a dog barking the difference distance ignore that and it's not that it's the end of their season and you know, they come up from a basal rosette i mean you can see it looks like there's one there to even bother coming up this year to come up from these basal rosettes down at the bottom and i guess they bloomed late and they're already finishing up just because they've been so drought stressed and i mean they're not dying because it's the end of their season i mean they uh generally speaking um you know are known to bloom into you know bloom into fall but, um, yeah, who knows? I think, what do we get here? Is this, a, uh, is this an Ambrosia? Oh, yeah, there we go. See there? It's Asteraceae. doesn't look like it from the top. You flip those bad berries over, you get the little uh, Ambrosia, Ambrosia flower. It's no clue what species. Some of these get massive. You know, this is what's causing your uh, allergies. A lot of people blame it on goldenrods, but it's uh, usually Ambrosia. All right, I gotta, I gotta think about making a move to get out of here. Orchid was going off in a different part of the, uh, yeah, I blame it on the Saldago, but it's not the Saldago. Oh, hey, look, another, uh, it's a Calistegia. Is that the name of that plant? Bindweed. Another one that opens at night. Big white flower, pollinated by moths. All right, let's go check out that orchid. Let's get out of here. Talk to you a little bit about the uh, Spiranthes cernua simplex. And I think we'll end up leaving it at that. Yeah, so this is uh, Ambrosia trifida. is the one that's uh, pretty famous. This is uh, Artemisia... Or, I'm sorry. Ambrosia trifida is the one that's pretty famous. This is Ambrosia artissima... Artissima... Eh. It, it, it's got the leaves that make it look like an Artemisia, okay? Artemisiae folia. So, obviously, I guess that's what it's named for. But it's a pretty common weed, although not a weed at all here. Completely native. Pretty cool ecology. I think these are annuals. Yeah, these are annuals. But some of the other species you get out in the Midwest, I mean, they just get, you know, they can grow to be 10 feet tall in a single season. You know, they get huge. Not this guy, though. This guy, I mean, this guy can actually get pretty big. This guy can get like five feet tall. But here, you know, it's been a dry year. So they're getting about, you know, a foot, foot and a half. Some two-footers. None of the five-footers. But, uh, yeah, our, um, look that one up. Ambrosia uh, trifida um, gets huge. I'm thinking of Artemisia, which, I mean, I, I guess, does Artemisia have... Uh, somebody looked that up for me. Does Artemisia have leaves that look like that? I know a lot of people love that because that's that mugwort, you know? A lot of people get really into that plant, the herbalists and stuff, which, I mean, nothing against Artemisia. That plant's not native here. This one is, so naturally I get a little bit more excited. And then just one more time, if you think I'm yanking your chain, I'll get in there for you. The tiny, tiny little flowers, but they're in there. I think they're actually almost done. 
yeah, this that's a little capitula. And that filery, you know, what that's actually sitting in, how weird is that? I mean, just for a sunflower, it doesn't look anything like filaries you typically see. In fact, if you walked by this, you'd assume maybe those are the fruits or something. But no, got little keens in there, uh, just like the rest of its uh, sunflower brethren. It's a cool plant. It's a shame it gets written off as an obnoxious weed. I'm not allergic to this at all. A lot of people are deathly, not deathly allergic, are very allergic to this plant, though. The source of many a fall allergy. Don't blame the solid dog. You can blame that plant. But again, he's just a little annual. He can't, he, he's just doing his thing, you know? Cut him some slack. And okay, with my last couple of uh, seconds of light here, you got a cute little orchid going off here. Spiranthes. I believe this is just Spiranthes cernua. Orchidoidea is a subfamily on this one. God, I can smell it from here. These, uh, some of the species of this actually produce nectar. A lot of orchids don't produce nectar. They uh, dupe insects into uh, pollinating them using a remarkable number of different strategies. And uh, these are a fall orchid. There's actually quite a few of them going off all around here. Kind of a you know small diminutive little guy. Some, there's a few species in the area. There's also a simplex. So there's a whole bunch of them very closely related in the same genus. And it's a little bit difficult to distinguish one species from another sometimes, but I'm fairly certain that this is just good old Spiranthes sternua. It's one of the more common ones, and they just love these, uh, zoom out for you for a second, they love these low, wet fields. And you can see quite a few of them just kind of hugging the edge here. But uh, yeah, that's that's the day. There's the sun is setting on us as the days grow shorter. You know, don't discount the, uh, the end of the summer just because you want it to be fall. I want it to be fall too. I'm sick of the hot weather, but uh, I love, um, you know, I love this hobby I've gotten into. Remember, resupinate flowers on many orchids. These are actually upside down, rotated 180 degrees. And uh, unlike Cypripedia macaw, which we all know and we all love, there's a little cute little mint growing, on, growing down here too, um, which we all know and love. Um, these guys have the plenia. Stick to the pollinators. You know, get them... Uh, Get the, uh, get the vicidia there, that little thread, get that stuck on there. And uh, that's how you uh, get those sacks of pollen onto the uh, female parts of hopefully another flower. But a uh, cool little orchid, you know, nice to see it. Nice to, nice to get a good smattering of a different orchid species this summer. Of course, I maybe saw, you know, six or seven of the 60 species that grow up here, all terrestrial orchids, you know. So uh, technically unusual for the family. You know, but I think we'll cut it off there. Hopefully it'll be a nice fall.